hey sweeties welcome back to another tutorial i am always excited to share with you something new okay guys so we'll be making this beautiful bumper jacket okay so make sure that you follow my facebook page which is sue with Anne. let's talk about fashion let's talk about how to go about things and also my instagram business page is the Anne scooter my instagram page is Annie Debra. okay so don't forget to like share subscribe and also turn on your notification bell so that you get notified anytime i upload a new video okay so without further much ado let's just jump straight into this tutorial as you all know i always go ahead and mark my starting line so that's what i'm doing right now i'm marking my starting line now we'll be drafting the front and back together we'll be also i'll also be showing you how to draft the neck i'll also be showing how to draft the waist the wristband and then i'll also show you how to draft a matching sleeve okay to your bumper jacket all right so i have folded this whole thing into two just like that and i then I mark my borderline so it's folded into two like so now the next thing I'll go ahead and do is mark my zipper allowance for the front panel okay so I'm marking one inches for the zipper So after I've I'm done, I'll just go ahead and connect this into a straight line. Now the next thing is to mark my shoulder measurement divided by 2. So my shoulder measurement is 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So that's what I've marked there. And also the next thing is to mark your neck width and depth okay so it's three by three inches for an average woman okay i'll just go ahead and connect this into a round curve like so okay so the next thing is to determine my shoulder slope now how do i determine the shoulder slope I'll just go ahead and mark 8 inches on my shoulder line and then right under the 8 inches I'll just go ahead and mark 3 quarter inches okay so 3 quarter inches because my shoulder line is not that slant or I don't have really have a deep shoulder slope unlike others some mark 1 inches some mark um, 2 inches some mark half an inch some mark like a uh, three quarter like i have marked and also remember that um when it comes to the shoulder slope you need to pay attention to whoever you are drafting it for so that you be able to know or determine how slopey the shoulder of the person is so i've just gone ahead to mark my shoulder slope now the next thing i'll do is mark my shoulder to bust and then this step is to uh, totally optional if you like you do it if you like you just leave the waist side but i will go ahead and mark my waist measurement and also for my top length i need um at about just 22 inches okay i'll be adding two inches of band which is which will be a total of 24 inches but you know the bumper jacket has this kind of um a gathering effect under and also kind of appear like a balloon something so i'll be marking 22 inches and then half inches for my top length because i'll be adding my um, waistband to it to make it 24 okay so i went ahead to transfer the measurement onto the other side now it's time to connect this into a straight line 
so like i said the waste part is optional you can choose to ignore the waste but i like to add a bit of curve okay a definition of curve in my bumper jacket so i just went ahead to mark down my waist measurement okay so now what we are going to be doing is we are going to be dividing our best bus measurement into four so bus measurements divided by four is 9.5 for me okay so i'm going to put this 9.5 on my bust line and then i'm going to mark okay and also my waist is 8.25 okay but because it's a bumper jacket i don't really need that kind of uh, fitting around my waist so i'm just going to go ahead and then add a bit of ease of half inches to it like so okay so i'll do the same thing to my hip measurement i'll mark my hip measurement of 10.75 and then i'll add a bit of ease okay just like that like so now the next thing is to go ahead and then mark my armhole measurement so i'm going to mark an armhole depth of eight and a half inches eight inches and then half inches for the sewing okay so i'll mark it like so and then i'll go ahead and then bring out my armhole line like that so after doing this i'll just go ahead and connect this to my 7.5 inches i've already done marked to my shoulder uh, mark okay and this is my armhole measurement so the next thing is i'm going to put the same measurements i put on the bust I'm going to put the same measurements on my armhole line okay the armhole line also can be referred to as your upper best measurement okay so I'm going to go ahead and add my ease bumper jacket is not fit so I went ahead to add 0 0.5 uh, 1.5 sorry all through okay like so so I'll just go ahead and connect like that oops i made a mistake here and yeah i want to hit you rule out a different line so guys the next thing i am going to be doing is i'm going to mark add um mark out my armhole sorry but before that just like i was saying the other time people normally just go straight to the hip measurement like so but I like to bring a bit of definition of curve in my uh, bumper jacket so I am not going to go straight down like so. So the next thing I am going to be doing is I am going to be adding 0 0.5 inches on the sides like so. So after this we can now go ahead and then mark out our armhole. Remember that we are drafting for both the front and the back. So I divided this into two like I did in my basic um, bodies tutorial, which I'll be leaving in the link down below. Okay. So after this, I'll just go ahead and mark my front armhole like so. So after marking the front armhole, I'll just go ahead and add my 0 0.5 inches for the joining the shoulder together and then connect it into a straight line. So after doing this, the next thing I'll just go ahead and then do is I'll mark my neckline. Okay. So that is the back armhole, and this is the front one. That's the back, and that's the front one. So I'll just mark one inches for the back. It could be less, could be more, depending on what you like. Okay.
I need to get a, a, a bigger curved ruler. Hmm. Okay, so I'll go ahead and refine my curves very well. All right, so I think basically we are done drafting. We don't need a, a, a dart for this, remember. For a bumper jacket, there is no dart. Okay, so I'll go ahead and then indicate my zipper allowance. Here is also the back neck or the back body thing. That is the back and bone. Right? So, this is the center front. And then we are going to be cutting this on fold or we cut it times two. Whatever way that it feels it is good for you, whatever method, you can go ahead and use it. So now the next thing is to go ahead and cut out my back pattern first. Make sure that you don't cut into the right arm hole. Okay, so after that, I'll just go ahead and split this open. And then I'll take down the one inches from the back because the one inches is not needed. Because we won't be adding any zipper to the back. So we'll be cutting this on fold. And we won't be splitting this open. Okay, so I can either trim it or I'll just leave it like this for a different tutorial okay so i'll just go ahead and bring out my front neckline and then my back my front armhole sorry so the next thing i am going to be doing is i'm going to be cutting my shoulder because i forgot to cut that side so i'm going to be cutting this leaving them 3.5 inch uh, seam allowance that will be joining the front to the back so this is the front and the back pattern the next thing is the neck drafting okay so before we draft the neck we need the back pattern so go ahead and take the measurement of the back pattern like i've done and i have 4.5 inches use this side of the neck okay to to guide your line make sure it's a straight line use the side to make sure that your neck line is going straight upwards okay so i just go ahead and refine my calves or trace out my calves like so after tracing out the calves like this the next thing i'll do is go ahead and then mark whatever measurements i got here right from the same line plus half inch for ease okay so after doing that i'll just go ahead and then determine the band width or the height whatever so what right now i'm just marking two inches for my band okay so remember that you are not going to be joining it straight you need to slant it a bit like i have done and then connect okay so now before doing Connecting this, I'll just come out from the neckline here a bit by just a quarter inches, okay, into the zipper line, okay, so that the band can sit well on my neck, okay. So just like that, I'll just connect this band like so, and then remember that this two inches band that I have taken, I am going to be. Uh, I've added already added my seam allowance. I don't want my band to be this big. Taking out my seam allowance will reduce the size of the band into 1.5. So we cut on fold uh, where I have indicated, and then time to cut this out. After cutting this out, the next thing we are going to be doing is to plan our pockets. Hmm. 
now I'll just go ahead and indicate my neck band okay all right so time to plan our pocket I'll just come in from my waist side by five or four inches but I'll be using four inches okay come in from the side by four inches right from the um, seam line okay and then I'll come in from here by two inches okay this is just to guide me as to where to draft my pocket it's not necessarily like two inches I'm just good it's just something to guide me mark a horizontal line like so all right well diagonal line rather <laughs> this diagonal right guys <laughs> I'm confused anyway let's just jump into this this tutorial that's what is necessary okay so right now I'm just going to go ahead and then draw the uh, my packet so the packet drafting is not really perfect but I hope that you can make it better when you are drafting yours okay so I am done and the next thing is to trace this out okay we are tracing this onto a fresh pattern paper I put this because my surface is very hard that is why I put this fabric under I'm just going it's just going to help me trace this out using my tracing wheel So after tracing this out, I'll just go ahead and then refine these lines using my marker. Lines and curve. Okay. So just so you know, I am going to be creating two aspects of this packet okay one is going to be longer than the other okay so i'm just going to create an extension where i'm going to be inserting a uh, 1.25 inches for my world packet okay so i'm going to be using this for the world packet okay so after that i'll just go ahead and connect this together like so so the next thing is to just cut it out now the next thing is to draft our waistband okay so just like i always do i create the starting line and also the next thing for me to do is i'm going to leave two inches in front that is why I'm going to be inserting my Ankara fabric. Okay. So the next thing is to mark 8 inches from my waistband. Okay. So after marking this 8 inches, I'll just go ahead and add 0 0.5 inches to this. Making 8.5 inches for draining allowance. Okay. Now I'll mark 2.5 inches for my band height. So the next thing is I'll join this band together like so and then I'll indicate my waistband. So I'll just go ahead and then cut this out and also I, I didn't measure all the way through because my waistband I'm going to be using a stretchy fabric. So I am going to pull to adjust and make sure that it creates that gathering effect that I want at the bottom. Okay. So I folded this into two. I'm just going to cut it like so. Now we have our sleeve block. Okay, so like I always do, my starting line is always important. 
now the next thing i am going to be doing is i am going to be marking my cap height which is 3.6 inches but i am going to be adding a um, few ease allowance so i'm going to be making it 3.75 inches for ease okay so i'm going to go ahead and mark the same cap height like so and then connect this into a straight line so after doing this i'll go ahead and mark my elbow moment like so and then my wrist measurement my wrist original wrist measurement is 23 inches but i'll go, go ahead and mark 22 inches and then half inches for sewing allowance because i'll be joining a band of two inches making 24 inches the band is 24 inches because the sleeve is, will be 24 inches because I want it to be longer a bit than my hand so that it will be able to create that bulgy and then gathering effect. Okay. So after connecting all these lines, I'll just go ahead and then insect that half of the armhole measurements I've put there. I'll go ahead and insect this like so. And also remember that I added an ease of 1.5 inches to this jumper jacket, bumper jacket. So I'm going to go ahead and add that ease like so. Now the next thing is to go ahead and connect from this side to my original armhole measurement. My ruler is kind of short but I'll try and then make sure that I keep a straight line. So after this. I'll just go ahead and then pick up my tape measure and then divide this from where I marked my point, my armhole into two, like so. So after dividing it into two, I'll just go ahead and indicate the middle. Okay. Now right on the middle, we are going to be drafting the back panel. So I am going to go out like by 0 0.5 inches like I've done. And then I'll connect it right to my start in line like so so the next thing i'll just go ahead and connect the rest into a straight line like so now back to the front panel so this is the back back to the front panel i'll just go ahead and then divide this from here to here into two like so and then i'll mark since from here to here is the same as from here to here i'll just go ahead and mark like so so we have three lines so one i'll just go ahead and then come up by this point i'll come by quarter inches and then from there i'll connect like so so i'll do the same thing to the other side i'll come by by a quarter inches and then i'll also connect my turn my ruler that way and then connect the points together so just like so, this is my front armhole. Okay. So the next step is just go ahead and so I'll blend my ease allowance like so. And then the next thing is to insert my elbow and wrist measurement. So my elbow is um, measurement is 11 inches divided by two. And then I added half inches for ease. And also because I need that kind of bulginess around my my wrist, I'll just go ahead and mark five inches. My original hip measurement is four inches. Okay, half of my original wrist measurement is four inches. But because I want that bulginess, I'll just go ahead and then add one inches to it to create that bulginess effect. Okay. So as you can see, I don't really have a, a, a ruler, a, the right a tool for drafting this, but I just went ahead to try my best to connect these lines together like that. Now the next thing is I'm going to be adding my sewing allowance. This is 0 0.5 inches. And then I'll connect those as well together. So 
so i'm trying my hardest i'm just trying my best to connect this with the tools that i have right now so i am done and then the next thing is to go ahead and then cut this out you can go ahead and make your elbow and the wrist measurement a bit more bigger if you want a bigger definition of the bulginess and then the gathering effect around your wristband okay so just like we did i'm just going to go ahead and then cut out the front armhole like so so now let's go ahead and then put down our measurement and then see if the back is really deeper the front is deeper than the back by 0 0.5 inches so as you can see it's really deeper by 0 0.5 inches and then now the next thing is the wristband drafting okay just like i didn't go all the way through for the waistband i'll just go ahead and then draft by 3.5 inches because this is a stretchy fabric i won't go ahead and then uh, mark all the way to the wrist no i'll just go ahead and cut 3.5 inches that is three inches for the waistband itself and then half inches to join it together okay so i'll cut this place on fold and because this one is already on fold i'll just go ahead and then mark 2.5 inches for my band height so just like that i'll go ahead and connect and then i am virtually done with it i'm practically done with it so i'm going to indicate weight raised band on it and then the next thing is to cut this out So guys this is it this is how it looks so i'll cut on fold and then this side is already on fold so thank you for watching this is basically it if you like this tutorial make sure that you give it a thumbs up and then make sure that you subscribe to my channel guys please motivate me by subscribing to my channel these are all the pieces i've got for my bumper jacket the next video i will be making is to put in these pieces together okay we are going to be sewing this bumper jacket so make sure that you turn on your notification bell so that you get notification anytime i upload a new video okay so that's all the pieces thank you so much thanks for the love so far